That's true. Most of them are low skilled. Okay. The, um, um, so, for example, in Barlavento, you have agriculture cooperatives, farmer cooperatives, you have restaurant cooperatives, motel cooperatives, um, sewing cooperatives, you have uh, taxi drivers, motor taxis, uh, motorcycle taxis, you have bus driver cooperatives, you have an awful lot of cooperatives from different sectors. It's really quite vast. But most of them, it's true, are lower skilled. So they're empowering people who before were unemployed or underemployed and giving them more economic power. Yeah. Can you uh, share Please. I don't have a lot of information on life in Venezuela, but I saw like the, uh, what's that, uh, photographer series, famous journalistic, uh, anyway, they, there's information that I have on my limited that there's rampant murder gang violence, kidnapping of baseball players, uh, Ringo's going down there, it's dangerous. What, what's the reality? Um, um, partially true. The two big problems, one is corruption I mentioned and the other one is crime. Okay? Um, poverty's going down, um, uh, unemployment's going down, crime should go down and it's not. Why it's not, I was mentioning before about 10 complicated reasons that are interlocking, okay? A whole lot of different reasons. The prisons, the courts, the police, the lots of different old cultures and things like that. It's not as bad as people, I mean if you read the US, uh, the State Department travel advisories, they say don't ever go there. Um, come to our house, we'll take care of you, we'll, we'll give you advice, you know. Yes, it's fine. But we take precautions. When you go out on the streets, you don't carry your money with you, right? Sometimes the motorcycles come back and snatch your bag, you know? I mean, that's a common crime. So it's not as bad as it makes it look out. But excuse me, crime is terrible. And it's traumatic when you experience it. Even a bag being snatched is traumatic. You don't like that. So I don't wish it on anybody. I've been robbed. It's a horrible feeling, okay? <laughs> Uh, they're first and then they're second. I grew up in Venezuela and I moved here when I was 18. And uh, I can tell you that way before Chavez, the crime, the violence, the snatching of the purses, the breaking of your house, it was the same. It was there. So I don't understand it is mm -hmm. a concern. It is a concern for me when I go home. But no, it, I repeat the question. It's not a Chavez, it's not a problem. Of I think very serious measures need to be taken. One is the National Police Force is a very positive initiative. Um, more training for police officers is a very positive initiative. There are many good things. I work in the prisons. I teach prisoners how to meditate. Prisons are worse in Venezuela than even in Brazil, and they're pretty bad there, so I, I yes, please. I, uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, to what extent uh, you are in conversation uh, in, in community with the indigenous people in Bolivia and Brazil that are working, um, coming from their own culture and their own paradigm uh, that's different from the uh, European one of property-based and I'm really interested in, in the, the, the legal uh, ramification, the, the new legal ideas, maybe not so new, but, but coming from uh, the Boliv uh, Bolivian uh, indigenous movements. And uh, on top of that, um, I also like how you address a number of things that are, are, uh, seem to be uh, speaking towards um, no growth. Uh, economies, uh, which I think we really need to go to with climate change upon us, and uh, you know, look, people look for other ways of being happy besides chasing after the almighty dollar. You know, looking for other ways to to feel good in their community. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, uh, the Constitution of Bolivia, and, and uh, I'm sorry, Ecuador was changed to reflect Panchamama, the idea of Mother Earth. The rights of Mother Earth need to be protected in the Constitution. It's a wonderful 
uh, new legal step that they're taking. It's still kind of new, so I can't really talk about what are the ramifications of this rights. Uh, the Venezuelan constitution, one of the most progressive in the world, as well as Bolivian, as well as Ecuador. Um, of course, it's one thing to have it on paper, it's another thing to implement it. And anybody who's tried to implement social change knows it's a long struggle, it's not quick. Um, it's a long road, but it's very important. Um, I'm not personally in touch with those indigenous movements, we're very much watching them. We're very, like the rest of the world, we very much appreciate it. Yeah? Uh, with 16 trillion dollars in debt, uh, what do you think the, ex the essentials of government should be provided to the people? I think the first priority of any government is to guarantee the five minimum necessities of life to every human being regardless of citizenship anybody. Food, clothing, shelter, education, medical care. That should be guaranteed to everybody. First priority of the government, <laughs> okay? Um, yes. Uh, what's gonna happen? I mean, we, the countries, many depressions have come in the past, economic depressions. They're not talked about a lot. The 30s, of course, was the most dramatic one, and the next one may be worse than the 30s. But even when everything crashes, well, farmers still grow food and people still need to eat. They just get together more often. You know, they, they don't go to the supermarket, they go straight to the farmers and they're, you know, cooperatives, uh, consumer cooperatives buying from producer cooperatives. It's wonderful, CSA farms, you know, I mean, there's so many positive initiatives out there and when things crash economically, suddenly those initiatives, those community, food not bombs, all these wonderful ideas suddenly have great importance and they multiply dramatically because everybody needs to eat and everybody needs to continue. So, I'm an optimist and I know that this is going to come out in a very, very beautiful way. It's just how, when, I don't know. I'm sorry, one was here. Uh, yes, please, and then. I was just wondering about the ideals of cooperative. Uh, is it universal or does it have to be a certain kind of society to change, let's say, with ours? They're cooperatives all over this country. They're generic. I'm talking generically in terms of cooperatives, okay? The, the International Cooperative Alliance has a definition that when workers own and manage their own enterprise in a democratic way, one person, one vote. I mean, this is basic definition of what a cooperative is. That's what I'm talking about. Each country has their own laws. And some countries, as was mentioned, make laws really difficult for cooperatives. When, when NAFTA started, the, the, the thing with Mexico and the United States and Canada, it ruined cooperatives in Mexico. They had to pay three times more taxes was one of the conditions of NAFTA. It's stupid. What did that have to do with the cooperatives in Mexico? So, but cooperatives can survive anyway and they are surviving, they had to change their legal status from cooperative to a civil association so they could continue, for example, in Mexico. So anyway, you should study, go to the cooperative association in your country, we're in the United States, right? And ask other cooperative leaders, they're happy to share their knowledge with you. They're not at all, you know, keeping it for themselves. They're happy to help start other cooperatives and other communities, they'll help. Uh, next, yes, please. Yeah, I, um, the embarrassed that you said this, and I missed it. But could you give us uh, more examples of what some of the cooperatives do? Is there any fabrication of products? Venezuela. In Venezuela, yeah. Um, you, you talked about some services, but I'm wondering if they build anything. Sure. Sure, production. Um, but I have to mention the most successful cooperative of all is an alliance of cooperatives in the state of Lada. It's called Secosa Sola, which means the cooperative alliance of the state of Lada, but actually it's five states now. And these are farming cooperatives that 
truck in their food, and they sell in the city of Barquisimeto. 60,000 people every week are buying their fresh produce from this cooperative. 60,000 people is a lot of people. It's one third of the whole city buys their food from this cooperative. It's been running for 49 years. It's a rather successful and it incorporates thousands and thousands of members and workers in the state of Lada. So that's the most successful cooperative in the whole country. Another very successful cooperative that they started too is running simultaneously, believe it or not, is funeral homes. <laughs> Funerals are very costly. It's a Catholic country. Everybody wants to bury their dead in a nice way. They spend, you know, it bankrupts families. So you have to pay 30 cents a month. And for 30 cents a month, you and five members of your family are all covered. If any one of those six people dies, you don't pay anything more. They give you a beautiful coffin, they have a beautiful funeral home, they'll take it for burial, the whole process, the whole works, and it's covered by your insurance. It's a cooperative funeral alliance that you know tens of thousands of people are members of. It's wonderful. It's like an insurance company, basically. So, I, I mean, it's a beautiful example. <laughs> and, it's, you know, and all the workers, they're very sincere. So it's a very beautiful ceremony and beautiful... Anyway, whatever. You know? So, uh, and of course, there are many more aluminum factories and other factories that are now under worker management. I should Thank probably you. give you a break. Uh, David Clark, Probably will really stay around and say other people want to talk and so on and so forth. But you know, thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you all for coming. Yeah. And I would just end by saying you people inspire me. The message of yoga of course is that you have within you the potential physical, mental and spiritual much more than you can possibly imagine. Together we can make it happen. Thank you very much. Yes. Your turn. Your turn. Folks who passed around a little piece of paper Thank asking you. for your feedback. Thank you. And copy the libro. Send my regards to Charlie. Okay. Yes. Send my regards to Charlie. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, one thing we want to tell people that I think Peter wanted to say earlier is that we're trying to build a future permanent site for our programs. Uh, we were a hot house at one point and now we're redeveloping as port of use. So your support uh, wants to keep in touch with us. And the other thing we do our experiences with the WPA program is that people really crave these kinds of uh, conversations. So we intend to have many more of them, and we want to stay in touch with you, so please give us back the way to do that. And I just want to say thank you so much for uh, coming and giving the presentation and to Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa from the Council General's Office and to the Hartman Cafe, we really appreciate being here. Thank you.